Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Dr. Whale Gareen is a prosthodontist practicing in Jupiter, Florida, and is the director of the Seaside Study Club. In this presentation, he discusses various treatment options for treating edentulous patients. Hi, uh, my name is Wael Garin. Uh, I'm a prosthodontist in uh, South Florida. I practice in Palm Beach County, and I'm also a director uh, of my study club. Um, and so you might have seen my face before in one of these meetings, symposium or director summit, uh, or maybe you've seen my great great grandfather go on tour. Um, he's very famous, and I'm sure you can see the resemblance between me and him. Um, everywhere I go, people tell me that I look exactly like him. So I am from Egypt, and I moved here 20 years ago, uh, and I've lived in New York for a little bit, and I've been in Florida for the past 12 years. So uh, today I wanted to uh, share with you uh, a topic that's very dear to me, and it's actually my passion and my practice. It's one of my favorite uh, subjects um, that uh, we deal with on, on daily basis, uh, pretty much, and it is edentulism. Um, and recently, uh, we know that uh, there is a lot of drive uh, from the dental industry to push for one kind of treatment for dentalism. And we all know the names, we've heard them. Uh, teeth in a day, teeth in an hour, DM, all on four, revitalize, teeth express, and each company has its own term for that treatment that they provide for the dentist patient. And this is obviously uh, driven by the need in, in, the, in the population for, for that kind of treatment. Uh, however, I don't like to limit myself to one treatment and that's why the title of my presentation today it's not the so clear choice uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the options that we have to give to our patients. So edentulism is on the rise and we know that from the literature and we know that in the year uh, 2020 we're estimating about uh, 61 million edentulous arches in the United States and that is a huge number for us to have uh, to, to treat and a big number of population that we have to address and we all know what happens with dentalism and we've all seen the videos with grandma's teeth flying during her birthday or the denture flying in the air when somebody is skydiving and we know that this is because of the impact of the bone loss once we lose our teeth uh, but we often don't think about is the impact on the psychology of our patients when we, when we lose our teeth especially that we live in a society that puts a lot of emphasis on teeth and uh, we make a lot of uh, of, of a comment of to the, in our heads or we, we perceive the patient to be well doing well and uh, more educated if they have better better dentition and if not we associate that with with uh, with, uh, with less um, uh, with, with less patients uh, I want to share with you a couple of my patients that I see in my office uh, Jill um, came to my office and she lived like that with her mask all the time uh, because she was ashamed of being edentulous. Um, another patient, Jackie, was living, putting her hand in front of her mouth all the time uh, because she was ashamed of her dentition. She's 49, she's about to turn 50, a big milestone in her life, and having dentition like that really is not the best way to live your life. And Patty, who had implants done, but really there was no thought process to where the implants are gonna go. She was promised to have a fixed restoration, but now obviously with what she has, implants in her mouth cannot be delivered what she was promised. So I wanna do an overview of what are the options for the edentulism, and it's gonna be a very quick overview. And uh, the second part, we're gonna talk about what is the thought process to these uh, options that we have. And at the end, I wanna finish my presentation with showing you one case of one treatment modality that we've been doing recently uh, that uh, has a lot of promise in the future. So, in brief, one of the, the most, uh, the easier options for edentulism is doing dentures, and I know a lot of us call them crutches because a lot of us think of them as not being the best option, which we know it's not the best option. However, we have to understand that for a lot of our patients, it is the only option because of different, different situations, whether it's because of the finances or other things, it is the only option. So we have to know that it is a good option sometimes, and we have to be familiar of how to provide our patients with a good fitting, complete dentures. Um, the second option uh, is uh, providing our patient with uh, an implant retained denture. And we all know that we use the locators uh, very frequently, and uh, it's a very successful treatment, and it's very easy to provide uh, a good uh, retained denture using the locators. Uh, 
measuring the, the soft tissue height, setting the size of the locator, um, and making the denture. However, two things we have to understand. Number one is that the denture has to be a very good fitting denture with that option. And number two is that we have to respect the parallelism between implants. Otherwise, as you see on the photo on the right hand side, there's been excessive wear of the locator abutments, which has to be changed frequently if these implants are not placed parallel to each other. And this is the main reason when we do uh, over denture, especially in the maxilla, we go and uh, provide a, a guided surgery to be able to make sure that the implants are as parallel as possible. The third option uh, for the edentrous arch is the bar over denture. It's uh, still a removal prosthesis, and it can come in different formats, whether it's a header bar, uh, whether it's bar with locators. And this one that I have on the screen is a tapered bar that's milled to an eight degree taper uh, using the MCO1 attachments, which is one of my favorite attachments because of ease of use and cleansability um, and support. And inside the denture, we have a framework that is done using the selective laser melting to have a precise fit between the overdenture and the bar underneath. The fourth option for edentulism is uh, obviously the hybrid prosthesis, which is the acrylic laid on top of, uh, used to be a gold casting, now it's milled titanium, or it can be a zirconia uh, implant supported uh, prosthesis, which is very famous now, very popular now, or the option that I'm gonna show you at the end of pre the presentation, which is uh, a screw retained uh, peak uh, restoration. So when do we know which prosthesis is going to be best for, for that patient? Uh, because I would like to have that decision made before any implants are placed. One of the things that I don't like is to have a patient come to me with the implants already placed in their mouth and ask me to restore uh, what they have because uh, depending on what is my final result, I want to make sure that I communicate with a surgeon to place the implants where I want them to be for that exact prosthesis. So I go through five steps uh, or five questions that I ask myself to be able to decide which prosthesis will be best for that patient. The first question is that are we replacing teeth only or teeth and soft tissue? And what I mean by that, if you look at the diagram uh, from Bedrosian, on the left hand side, you'll see that a lot of uh, limited space for us to be able to provide a prosthesis that has pink in it, as opposed to the diagram on the right hand side when there's a lot of vertical room and allows us to place a prosthesis that has pink in it. So the patient on the left, we're gonna be limited with what we can provide. It has to be either a zirconia or a PFM restoration, as opposed to the one on the right, which would have a lot more flexibility to what we provide them. And you can see this patient was treated with a prosthesis without any pink in it, which obviously doesn't look very aesthetic because we should have added pink around the cervical of, of these teeth. Second question is that, is the edentulous is ridge visible in the aesthetic zone or not? And what I mean by that, if you take out the removable denture and the patient smiles and you don't see the ridge, then you can provide the restoration that has pink in it that will be able to, to hide the transition line between the pink and the soft tissue easily as opposed to the picture in the middle of the screen when the patient smiles, we're gonna have to either do bone reduction to be able to place the implants more apical and hide the transition line, or we're gonna have to provide an over-denture uh, prosthesis with, uh, with a flange to, to cover the transition line. And this becomes very hard in cases where we have a hyperactive lip when the patient smiles and the lip moves quite a bit up and that transition line becomes very, very hard to, to, uh, to hide under the lip. And this is not only a problem in the, mandible, in the maxilla, but also in the mandible sometimes. Um, so we have to make sure that even in the mandible, when the patients talk or smile, that the lip doesn't drop down and show that transition line. The third question is that if we need lip support or not. Uh, so it's pretty simple to remove the prosthesis, look at the photogra photograph from the profile and see whether that lip has to be supported for aesthetics or not, or for phonetics, uh, and make sure that if we need the lip support, that we know that our final restoration is gonna have to have a flange to be able to provide us with that support. The fourth question is that what is the amount of bone that we have left? And this bone that we need is obviously to place the implants and provide an AP spread that is sufficient for us to be able to provide a fixed restoration if that is uh, the goal of, uh, of our treatment. And uh, not only, uh, in the mandible, but also in the maxilla, obviously when we have to look at the AP spread to be able to avoid any anterior cantilever situations like you'll see uh, in these uh, mounted casts. And recently we've been using a lot of guided surgery uh, to be able to place the implants with a good AP spread to be able to uh, provide uh, the patient with a fixed restoration if that is the desire. And this specific radiograph was taken uh, for a patient that we used the in-sequence system for to place uh, the implants and the provisional prosthesis on the same day. 
The fifth question that I ask myself is what are the patient's desires? Uh, because uh, a lot of times we perceive or we think that the patient will be a lot better with a fixed restoration while not all the time this is the case. Some patients will prefer to have a removal prosthesis for cleansability and also some patients might have a hard time with removable if they have some dexterity problems with their hands. So with these patients we might have to go with something that is easier to remove or a fixed restoration making sure that they can clean around that as well. So the patient's desires have to be factored in another decision to which restoration we're going to provide them. So for the past 30 years plus since Brenna Mark presented implants to us here in the States in 81, uh, the main treatment with the edentulous arch was a fixed restoration, which is screw-retained hybrid. And that's been used very successfully over the past few years or 30 years plus. Uh, however, that doesn't come without its own problems. And the main problem with these restorations is fracture of teeth or delamination of the acrylic. And although this is very simple, thing to, to restore or to fix, it becomes inconvenient to the patient and cumbersome, especially when this happens repeatedly and we have to fix these restorations. So we've been looking at different options to be able to avoid that problem that we've had. And one of the options that we've been doing is using milled dentures over the milled titanium bar, uh, like from Avident. Uh, they've been, uh, we've been working with them and this is one of the examples that they provided us uh, with uh, the milled monolithic acrylic uh, that, is lay, that is placed over the hybrid, which is much stronger than the conventional denture teeth that we've been using. Um, however, that comes with its own limitations with some, some of the aesthetic issues because of be it being monolithic, the aesthetics are not as nice as it would be if it was layered uh, processes. And the other option that we have is obviously the very popular option now known as zirconia fixed restorations, which also has its own limitations and we don't know long term uh, what that will be doing uh, with, uh, with our patients. So what I'm gonna spend the last four or five minutes with you is just showing you uh, a new material that we've been working with. And this material has been used in, in Europe for the past five years or so. And it's just been making its way to the US and is going through the process of being used in the US. And this technique was developed by a gentleman by Lee Mullins and Phil Reddington from the UK. And uh, the lab that I work with uh, in Jupiter, Florida doing these cases is uh, Paragon Dental Lab and Bill Connell is my technician. And this is based on using a peak material, um, uh, which is high performance polymer uh, as a substructure and layer that with Emax teeth to be able to provide the aesthetics that we're looking for. This specific material that we use for that case is from Pecton. It's called Pecton, or it's from Sondre Meteau in Switzerland. And uh, that restoration or that material has a lot of promise because of its weight, its mechanical properties. It has the same modulus of elasticity as bone, and it's relatively inexpensive to fabricate compared to other materials that, uh, that we have the option to use. So um, I'm gonna present to you Alan, who came to us uh, because he had his maxillary restoration that was done 20 years ago, uh, failing. It was done over teeth and implants. Uh, and this case was treated with my colleague, Dr. Karina Leal, uh, who is my periodontist. Uh, so we decided to uh, remove the teeth and transition him into a fixed restoration over implants. And as you can see, like we talked about, that this case they should have uh, placed pink around the teeth instead of having these long teeth. And that was the first question that we had in the five question sequence. So when we took out the old restoration, placed, him, uh, placed a provisional restoration, this is a milled PMMA, uh, that we decided to add pink to it to transition him into the aesthetics that we're going to uh, at, at the end. Uh, once the implants were placed and integrated, the patient came back to our office for the, for the prosthetic procedure. So first thing we did is that we made a final impression and we generated a verified master cast, which are the same steps that we do for all our fixed restorations, whether it's hybrid or zirconia, and that was mounted on the articulator. And the uh, next step was to fabricate a wax try-in. And this is when we start to differ a little bit uh, for, between the different uh, uh, techniques that we have. So this was a, a, a wax up that was you, uh, done used denture teeth and uh, make sure that uh, we're happy with the aesthetics and the phonetics and everything is checked before we send this back to the lab. The lab receives that wax up and they go through the process of uh, mounting this wax up on uh, an instrument called the verticulator to preserve the vertical dimension. And basically they're gonna reverse engineer a bar underneath these teeth to be able to fabricate that uh, peak material or the pecton uh, uh, bar, which can be milled or can be pressed. And over here, we're looking at the angulation of the implants. These are the teeth that are kept in the matrix in the verticulator. And at this point, the lab will go and prep the inside of these teeth to fabricate a room for the framework. And uh, 
abutments are selected and placed on the cast, make sure everything is seated, and then in reverse en engineering, we are gonna provide uh, a pattern resin bar that will be used, that will be scanned to fabricate the peak material. And over here, you can see on the left that the resin is placed on the cast, and on the right, the resin is placed on inside the teeth where it was prepped. They'll be placed on top of each other on the verticillator and provide that uh, copy of the bar that we're looking for, which gets scanned, and gets milled into the peak material. Now these denture teeth will be used uh, to, uh, to be transformed into Emacs. That we're gonna invest these denture teeth to be transformed into Emacs and that technique is called the, uh, the burn denture tooth technique. Uh, and this minimizes the lab work that is required for, for these cases. The framework is tried in, in the mouth, uh, make sure everything is fitting passively and then it goes back to the laboratory where they get the single individual Emax teeth, which gets cemented on that bar after treating the bar. Uh, and at that point, uh, start layering the, the pink composite around the teeth to be able to, to provide the aesthetics and gets placed in a light cure oven. And this is the restoration when it's finished. And you can see one of the, the benefits of doing these restorations is the aesthetics that you can get because these are Emax crown. The posterior Emax crowns are monolithic and the six anterior are cut back and layered uh, with feldspathic porcelain. This is the final uh, radiographic uh, verification of the seating of the, the prosthesis. And this is the final result, aesthetic result of the patient during smile. And this is the before and after restoration. So this is a technique that provides us with an aesthetic result that's relatively easy to make, that is relatively inexpensive to make, using the burn denture tooth technique, using the peak material uh, to provide us with a good fitting restoration. So in closing with uh, the edentrous arch, uh, we have to understand that edentulism is, is a disability and there is no one way to treat edentulism uh, because we have to treat the edentrous patient, not the edentulism. We have to keep all options on the table and be able to tailor our treatment to the patient's needs. And uh, ideally, we're looking for the perfect material that doesn't exist yet. But we hope to have a material that's as hygienic as an overdenture, that is as passive as a milled bar hybrid, that is as repairable as acrylic, as strong as zirconia, as aesthetic as feldspathic, and as thin as BFM. And obviously, we don't have that material yet, but we are in the quest for finding the perfect material, and hopefully we'll get there one day. So I want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much.